Yeah, noncompliance, um, I think, is a powerful political tool. But the, ultimately, the reason to do it isn't because of the ends that you predict it will achieve. Um, it's it's there's also a spiritual aspect to it because by complying or not complying with various social rituals, which is what all the COVID stuff is, it's a set of rituals and taboos. Um, by complying or not complying with those, you define to yourself who you are. These systems of of ritual have themselves a kind of a consciousness or you could say a, a frequency. And for some people, they are totally, um, some people are totally at home in that frequency. They've got no problem with it. They're, they're not making any kind of, they're not betraying themselves to go through those rituals. The masks are signifiers that mean different things to different people. And if you are in the state of consciousness that corresponds to the reigning paradigms of our society, then you will feel at home in those rituals. But most of the people on this call, to some extent, do not feel at home with those. And it feels like an act of self-betrayal. And that alone is reason enough not to comply. That's uh, exactly why I've been doing it. I, I feel yeah. true to myself by not complying. Yeah. Even if it doesn't do any good, and even if someday the Absolutely. Gestapo drag you out of the, your house into the vaccine <laughs> van and forcibly vaccinate you, like even if it doesn't work to change the world, it's still worth doing. And it becomes all the more powerful when you are doing it from the place I just described. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. I, and I've had those thoughts as well. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm doing it for myself because that's, that's the world in which I feel comfortable and that's the world I want to live in. So uh, that, yeah. that's great. I just wondered if there are many lim limitations to that. And uh, I suppose that goes back to the conversation you had with Mariam about uh, uh, being hurried. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Charles. Mm -hmm. Penny, uh, if I could bring you up to, to join us now. I think your question would be interesting to follow, uh, Russell's. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Dr. Frankel, who you probably are very aware of, um, said that we come into the world asking two questions. Who am I and where do I come from, which is something you were alluding to earlier on this evening. So as a survivor of the Holocaust, he discovered in the camp that hope was the key to whether someone survived or not. And we know today that um, hope is in very short supply, particularly amongst the youngsters. Um, when an inmate lost hope, they died very quickly. And from what I understand that there are big problems with the young um, losing hope. Um, so Frankel based his life's work on this. And my question really is, what is your understanding of the word hope? And um, we so often um, use this word hope in terms of creation. We create our own hope, basically. And, but I, I, my question is, um, is it about creating hope or is, uh, or does hope, in your opinion, have a different sort of substance? It has a different sort of substance. Yeah. Hope is a, is a function of self-trust. And it's different from wishful thinking, where you mm -hmm. have to persuade yourself that something is possible. Um, authentic hope comes from, it is a, it's a premonition of it comes from a glimpse of a future that is actually possible a recognition of a possibility you may not know how to get to that future but you know that there is a way to do that mm -hmm. and when you are and 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 when you trust the part of yourself that knows that then you are able to transmit hope to others yeah. if you don't trust that part of yourself that knows that then you will feel despair and you might try to persuade and convince yourself that it is actually realistic that we will, you know, overcome the techno totalitarian elites and, 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 you know, all those people. But if you have to persuade yourself, that isn't actually hope anymore. And you won't be able to convince others either because you don't fully believe it yourself. 
So you have to touch the part of you that actually knows that such a future is possible. And how do you know? It's because you've seen it. You've had experiences that show you the future and that you can recognize as outreaches of the future into the present. So receive those experiences with gratitude. Gratitude is what integrates them. Mm -hmm. And as you receive them fully, you'll come to trust them and you will transmit hope, hope to others because when you, when you speak from direct experience, people will believe you. Yeah. Even if you don't speak, you'll radiate that. And, and if you sometimes feel hopeless, then you can ask, okay, well, why aren't I trusting myself and what I've actually seen and what I actually know? What hurts in me that needs to be healed and cleared so that I can come more fully into my, into my trust? Yeah. 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 Thanks for that. I mean, I, I, I sort of see it, uh, hope integrally linked with, with faith but also with love, you know, this whole trio, this whole Christian trio of faith, hope and love, I think has maybe been um, misunderstood so much. And um, it's almost like you can't separate the three. Um, I don't know what you feel about that, but I just, I just sense that, because you're talking to me about how I can speak that into somebody's life. Um, and I, I guess, I want to be someone who can be useful to the next generation of what that looks, you know, how can I bring hope, real hope to, um, to yeah. Uh, yeah, a generation of people that are. So speaking specifically to you and I'm sure others also, um, it's really important to surround yourself with people or at least to touch in to a group of people who validate your hope. Mm -hmm. You can't hold it by yourself. Most people cannot hold it by themselves. Mm -hmm. You need to put yourself in situations with very, very positive people who are well developed in their trust that a more beautiful world is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Nourish yourself that way. It's really important. Mm 